Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down where, with, there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in this place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments, the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is, come, who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they, were talk, that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea of Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The true, the true gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord, the word, the light. All right, be seated, please. Say good afternoon to you. A librarian commented concerning a woman just leaving her desk that she could get more out of a mystery novel than anyone she knew. How is that? asked her co-worker. She replied, she starts in the middle so that she not only wonders how it comes out but also how it began. This illustrates what a great many people are doing with life today. They have no idea how things began or how things will end up. All they look at is the middle of the story. They see the contemporary scene only, and the result is that they have too much mystery on their hands, and life is confusing. Our gospel reading today is about an incident in the Bible that left many people guessing. Let's take a look at that little piece that uh, Christ put into action to make it all work out. So let me say that again. Let's take a look at the little pieces that Christ put into action to make it all work out. Years ago, a very famous organist was giving a recital on a new organ. The wind was pumped by a small boy behind a screen. The boy pumped his heart out at this recital, and he was glad for the in, uh, in intermission halfway through the program. Out in the vestry of the church, the boy looked up at the great organist and said, Aren't we wonderful? And the prideful organist responded, Who's we? Saddened, the lad returned to his pump for the climax of the recital. The organist pressed the keys for the opening chord, but only silence came from the majestic pipes. The signal must have failed, the organist thought, and so he repeated it and then pressed again for the thunder to come. No thunder came. There was only a small voice from behind the screen saying, Now who's we? The title of this afternoon's message is How to Be a Successful Nobody. I guess I ought to change that up here, huh? I forget that sometimes. How to be a successful nobody. It's a big mistake if we fail to recognize the importance of obscure, behind-the-scenes people. Some of the greatest and uh, most famous people in the Bible are people whose names we don't even know. You can do great things, too, if you learn two secrets. And the first secret is to make available to God what you have. The boy made available what he had, his lunch. What are you making available? The question is not, how much do you have? But, are you making what you have available? The widow had only a penny, but she gave it all to God, and this made her great in the eyes of Christ. The Good Samaritan, we don't even know his name, but 
We know that he had was ava- what he had was available. He had time, compassion, and some degree of wealth, and God used him. The boy with five loaves and two fishes, he didn't have great resources. God doesn't ask for what you don't have, only that you give what you do have. Jesus didn't expect the boy to feed the 5,000. All he needed was for the boy to give what he had. Christ will do the rest. Because everybody has something to give. Marion Simmons, in Your Life, told the story of a girl who wanted to give her older sister a birthday gift, but she had no money in her bank. But unselfish people always have something to give. When her sister opened her package, she found three colored slips of paper. One said, good for two dishwashings, good for two bed makings, good for two kitchen shrubbings. These were among her most welcome birthday surprises. The second secret to know so that you too can do great things is that what he had was made adequate. Christ used it. Make sense? What he had was made adequate and Christ used it. God can take our small investment and our weak and inadequate gifts and use them to be a blessing to many. Certainly this boy had no idea what Jesus could do with his little lunch. We have no idea what he may do with what little we have if we make it available to him. This unknown boy became famous in God's history book. A pilot of an American Airlines DC-6 was flying 21,000 feet over the Colorado Rockies when his plane threw a propeller which crashed through the fuselage and ripped the engine from the wing. With half the controls gone, he brought it into Denver for an emergency landing. A reporter at the scene asked him what he did. He said, in a situation like that, you just move over a little bit and let God take over. And that's what the boy did with his lunch. Because see, even kids have something God wants. Every one of us has some resource that Christ needs to accomplish his goals. Others may do a a greater work, but you have your part to do. And nobody else can do what God has called you to do. One time Jesus' disciples didn't realize how important and valuable kids were. They tried to shoo the children away from Jesus. But Jesus loves all children and told them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. That little boy with the lunch would have laughed at you had you told him that God would feed 5,000 people with his lunch that day. We need to learn that little is much when we make it available to Jesus. Finally, I want to share with you a story about a young boy who worked long hours in a factory in Naples. He longed to be a singer. When he was 10 years old, he took his first voice lesson You can't sing. You haven't any voice at all. Your voice sounds like the the wind in the shutters, his teacher told him. The boy's mother, however, had visions of greatness for her son. She believed that he had a talent to sing. But she was very poor, and singing lessons were a luxury and very expensive. Putting her arms around her son, she encouragingly said, My boy, I'm going to make every sacrifice to pay for your voice lessons. Her confidence in him and constant encouragement paid off. That boy is considered, even by today's standards, one of the world's all-time greatest singers, Enrico Caruso. If you don't know who it is, look it up. Not many will become as famous as Caruso, but every one of us is given an opportunity to make something worthwhile out of our lives and to be equally rewarded. The important thing to remember is that it's not what we have or don't have, but what we do with what we do have. If you ever feel like a nobody with very little to offer for the kingdom of God, don't despair. You're just what Jesus is looking for to demonstrate again that he loves to make much of little. He did it with the boy, and he'll do it with you. You've all heard me speak about times when I preach and and while I'm editing the video for YouTube or our podcast, sometimes it's like I'm hearing the words that I'm saying for the first time 
and that the words I'm using, the phrasing and the vocabulary don't match up to what I would normally use. In other words, it just didn't sound like me. It sounded like, like somebody else's words coming out of my mouth. And I often feel humbled and honored because I know then that the Holy Spirit has come through me to deliver a crystal clear message to anyone listening. God, through the Holy Spirit, has chosen me, and nobody really, to deliver his message. When this happens and I'm made aware of it, it invigorates me, encourages me to continue building this church that I'm so blessed to have been a part of the creation of. It helps me to go on, even during the, the tough times. I just remember that Jesus loves to make much out of little. We may be a small congregation, but again, I remind myself, he loves to make much out of little. How many of you want Jesus to use you to bless others? I mean, I know I do. But are you willing to give all you have to Jesus, no matter how much or how little you have, so that he can do something big with your life? Amen.